What's going on everybody? Come back. Got a little project we're fixing to start for the camping season and we'll see you shortly. Well, what's going on everybody? It's Patrick Midton Outdoors. I want to bring back my old comb and stove. Now I've used this thing for years camping and the way I actually used it I no longer use this thing with it. I bought the adapter I get it out. I bought the adapter to use the five pound propane cylinders with it and it works great. Um, I was looking at buying a new stove and I thought why? I know this thing is kind of thick and the newer one's a lot thinner but it is what it is. I'm saving a little money I'm just going to paint this thing but the first thing I'm going to do is take it apart Take it, pull it apart, get the grill off of it, the grill part off. I'm going to take the guts out of it so we can wash it down real good, degrease it, sand it, and paint it. And I'm going to bring you along for the whole thing. So if you decide you want to do a project like this, maybe you decide you see one of these at a yard sale and decide you want to buy one and put it, you know, restored or whatever you want to do. Or you can use it the way it is. But um, it's really time to clean this one up. So I'm going to take the burners apart. I'm going to take the burner unit completely out. Um, shouldn't be a big deal. And uh, I'll bring you back if I see anything that we might need to address. Now like the latch, I will not take off because it is riveted on. I don't want to try to re-rivet something. But I will take off as much as I can to repaint. And we'll be using a high temp paint. And I'll show you what I'm going to use later on in the video when we get to that part. This thing is not in that bad a shape. It's not real rusty. It, matter of fact, it's not rusty at all hardly. But I want to clean all the little areas and um, clean it, just clean it up. Just give it a good, I mean, it has a leaf in it still. So we're going to get all that stuff out. And we are going to wash it. I may pressure wash it with pressure washer. I don't know. I may just use a good solvent and clean it up. This is a Coleman 425E. This is old. This is an old unit. This is my parents had and um, they actually had two of them. They've got a second one there. It's at the house but I'm using this one. I have been using this one for many years. So we're going to continue to use it. We're just going to clean it up and make it great again. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the burners apart on the inside now, from what I'm looking at so far, the most you're going to need to do any disassembly on the burner unit is a Phillips head. I'm using a number two Phillips head. Sorry, it won't focus that close. And just a plain old flathead. You'll use the plain old flathead on this part of it, the actual burner part. This has been part before. Um, So that's why it's coming apart fairly easy. It's not seized up or anything. I highly recommend doing this, you know, every once in a while with your stoves. Clean them out real good. It doesn't hurt them at all. If you'll notice, it just lifts right off. There's your whole burner pack and all. One piece. Just like so. Um, make sure of something. Nope, it doesn't matter how they go back. They're, they're identical. You want to keep it all lined up or it won't burn right. But it's all pretty much identical on both sides. I would say I did that on purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take a little bit of duct tape will work just fine. But I'm going to use gaffer's tape because I've got it and it doesn't leave residue. And I'm going to tape these together just the way they came off. If I can tear the tape. This stuff's really super strong. And um, <laughs> I've learned to use it on a lot of different projects. But I'm just going to do this right here. I'm going to tape this up. So that it stays together. I'm going to throw it in a sandwich bag. To keep it together. Like I said, it doesn't matter looking at them it doesn't matter on which side which goes okay now that we're getting all that put together like I said kept 
Now I'll show you how these look in case you're wondering. I'm just going to lift this one up real quick and you'll see how those look apart. Well, I guess I could if I put them up to the camera. So you see how those go together. But what I'm going to try to do is just leave them all together and I'm not going to take them apart because there's nothing wrong with them. They're not dirty. There's nothing in them. Most of the time, all, anything that would drop down in there gets burned off anyway. So no, no big deal there. So anyway, those are all taped up and ready to go out of the way. Now that's all you need, I think, for the Phillips head or, or flathead. I'm going to turn it over because there is one screw on the bottom right here. And it's a Phillips head. We'll go after it. Go ahead and take it apart. And then all the rest of them are going to be with the lid open. So we'll take that off like so. open this up and what that did yeah there's a little screw shim basically that's where your pipe comes in from your or pipe go your fuel goes in and distributes to the burners now yes the newer ones probably more regulated and you get a better burn out of them but I've learned how to use these over the years and I cook just fine with these things um, I mean I've been using them since I was 13 14 years old uh, camping, Boy Scouts, and everything. So we got that screw out of the bottom. That just holds that down. So we're going to go and take both of these screws out. Like I said, these are coming right out with no problem. They're a sheet metal style screw. You might can see if it'll focus in on it. It's just a sheet metal style screw. There we go. Nothing real Oh yeah, she's almost ready to fall right out. Now I have found that you can order the sticker that's on the back here. Actually, this is painted on. Uh, now they it's on there with a sticker. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, since you probably can't see it, let me erase the angle of the camera. That Coleman sticker right there is what I'm talking about. You can actually buy that and replace it if you want to. I'm not going to worry about it. I may not paint. The inside as much as the floor part and the outside that's the worst looking part of the whole stove right now plus I got some stuff to get off here I don't know why that tape was on there we're gonna take it off it's not needed doesn't draw with the hinges so I don't know why it was on there to begin with okay so I want to get you on the side to show you this so this is how this goes in here this thing's fixing to get real um, <laughs> top heavy but you just slide that right out and there's your burner unit. Take it apart, take it out. Whoop. Let me back you out so you can really see. So that's how it came, comes out. It just slides right out of there. And now you got full access and you've got the burners out. Everything looks good in here. Um, there's, we'll just let that lean back. There's a little bit of surface style rust, but nothing that's, I mean, it's all from burn. I will wash this real good and everything and let it dry out pretty good. But there's not a lot to these things. And it's amazing how well they hold up over the years of use and um, honestly neglect. But now it's ready to go to the next step. It's ready to be stripped and cleaned. And that's what we'll be doing next is stripping and cleaning it. Real quick, I do want to drop this into this video. Now, I've cooked with the white fuel, the Coleman fuel, many years. Never had any problems whatsoever cooking this way. I prefer the propane method using this or a propane stove a little bit better more. Um, the reason for being is with these, you have to pump them up every time. 
Uh, these seals do go bad after a while and you have to replace them from time to time. This one's in really, really good shape. I'm pretty sure there's not any fuel left in it. I hope there's not. <laughs> but I... No, she's dry as a bone. Um, sometimes you have to replace those seals in the, in the caps. Um, but this one is, it's never been used hard enough to have to have any of that. I mean, if I was to go back to using white fuel with it, I would uh, more than likely replace that seal. The pump, I was trying to fill the pump, see if it felt okay. It feels like it's, feels like it's um, pumping up. But anyway, um, there's nothing wrong with these. If you choose to use them, go for it. Don't put gasoline in these things. This was the problem that was happening back in the early 80s was people putting car gasoline in these things to use them and they're not meant for that. It's not meant for that at all. Me personally, I'm retiring this completely out of the front picture. I'm going to stick to this little unit right here to use the five cylinder propane gas tanks. Um, and that's it. That's all I'm going to use. I've had good luck out of it. I've used it for many years with this so we just want to repaint it we want to make it look good again all right guys okay so we're going to get back onto the cook stove video here and i went to walmart to uh because i'm cheap and i wanted to get some stuff to clean this thing up so i'm going to try some of the purple power i hear everybody talking about this being a good degreaser and everything and that's face it that's a lot of what's in this is grease. Um, and I found these. I've had these before and I really like them. Um, they're called Venom Steel Rip Resistant Gloves. So I got a pack of them to um, um, use to clean up, you know, because we're messing with chemicals that could be harmful to our health at some point in time in our life, I'm guessing. I'm, of course, I'm 50 years old, so. It probably doesn't really matter anymore. But we're going to use that. Um, I dig it. Went ahead and picked up two more propane cylinders. I've probably got half a dozen up there already. I just like having them. You know, it's called be prepared. Um, I got something else that we'll look at someday on the channel, but not right now. Oh yeah, I went ahead and bought me some redneck um, cologne to go in the truck. I always keep a can of this in the truck. And the last one I had, um, it was done. But then I also got, this, I think the wife would see um, badly and think badly of me. But I got me a good scrub brush that we're going to use to scrub this up. And I'm going to try something else. I was going to paint this at some point. But I think now I've decided I'm going to do something else. Um, the paint looks like it's in pretty good shape. Once I get this tape off, I still haven't figured that out. Anyway, um, I think once I get the, the tape off and everything, um, it may clean up pretty good. So why paint it? Say, you know, there's another 10 bucks or so that I'm going to waste. And why waste it? So we're going to get set up. Okay, guys. So, I'm taking it out, we've washed it, cleaned it, we've discovered two things. One, uh, Purple Power is good stuff, it's a good degreaser. Two, it's also a good paint remover. We discovered three things. Three, Cohen doesn't use a high temp paint on their cook, cooking gun, uh, these things, the stoves. At least they did on this one back in the day. Because uh, I wouldn't think if it was a high temp, good, strong paint that um, anything would take it off. But that purple power sure does erase it right off. It takes the grease off, but man, it erases the paint right off of it too. So I'm going to finish drying it up, but I don't think I'm going to do anything else as far as the cleanup on this thing goes. Um, I degreased it. I will say that the purple power does degrease. It, I agree. It's a good degreaser. Also a good paint remover, as you can see. Um, so I'm just going to finish drying this off really good. 
or finish drying the paint where it stays the rest of the time on there. Uh, if that does become a problem, I'll just, I will sand it and paint it. And at this point in juncture, it looks like to me they didn't use high temp paint. So it doesn't matter what kind of paint I use on the outside of it at all. Um, but yeah, it, it got all the grease and crap that was in it out. So that, that's, that's a bonus. Oh, I got, let me fix this where it won't fall over. What do you think about my t-shirt my wife got me? American flag with the woods and there's a tent down there somewhere. Pretty cool, huh? All right, guys, we're going to get back to clean up the stove and putting it back together. And we may even do a test burn. I've got fuel. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, so we're going to screw this on here real quick. We're going to do a test fire. This is one of the Coleman, it's one of the older ones I had hanging out. Just let it dangle like that, it'd be okay. I always save these, put them back on it because I've had one leak before and caused a major ruckus in this house. Just ask my wife, she reminds me. So, we're gonna turn it on. I can hear the propane rolling now. She's lit. I'll open the other side. It's lit too. And on these, when you light both sides, you'll have to crank this one up a little higher to get this one. You know how it works. Because this one's fed from that one right there. But she's working great. Ready to make uh, a good camp meal at some point. Now these don't get to rocking too hard and you can adjust the flame. I mean I've I've worked with these things quite a bit over the years and gotten really used to how they burn. So oh step number two get one of these if every time you light something like this it makes you jump I've been lighting these things for years and it makes you jump every time but yeah she's ready to go ready to go camping if you're worried about this you can always take a bungee cord and bungee it to the bungee it somewhere if it's laying on the picnic table it doesn't matter I've never had any problem with it dangling like that that little spring seems to hold it in there pretty good but Anyways, that's it for now. She's ready to go camping. I'm ready to go camping. Chase is ready to go camping. Chloe's ready to go camping. So I got some camping to do, guys. So stay tuned. We will be back camping very, very soon. Yeah, I know the paint came off a little bit, but you know, hey, we'll deal with it. And you know, and like I said, now that I've discovered that this is not a heat resistant paint. I'll wait till I can find something that's pretty close to the Coleman Green to repaint the outside again. All right, guys, that's it. Be prepared.